Hey guys, what is going on? Happy, what day is it? Uh, Tuesday? Yeah, happy Tuesday. It's about 5.45 a.m. Could not sleep, so this is what I'm doing. Uh, I've been thinking about making this video for a little while. I think that it could be really useful for a lot of uh, new growers, especially people who are using these all-in-one grow bags for the first time. Um, so, a lot of people get to this point where it's obviously fully colonized. This looks great. I mean, man, uh, that's what you want to see right there. Uh, there's a little bit down here that hasn't colonized yet. That's like cocoa core that got shoved up in the gusset. That's going to be fine. I'm just going to kind of brush that off or something or kind of leave it in the bag. The rest of this stuff should remain intact, you know? Um, but the point is, is that a lot of people get to this point and they see pictures of, of mushrooms that have been growing in the bag and they don't understand how to get it to that point. Um, so this video is going to be about an alternate method, uh, where you take it out of the bag completely. You don't worry about any of that stuff. I will say though, if, uh, you are trying to fruit in the bag, uh, to introduce fruiting conditions, all you need to do is introduce fresh air. And you can do that in a few different ways. Um, some people cut three sides out of the four and uh, it turns into kind of like a hoodie. That's called hoodie tech. And then they'll throw like a rubber band down here to uh, keep everything tight so nothing grows on the sides. And uh, that fresh air along with the rubber band, the rubber band's not completely necessary, but the fresh air is, uh, will tell the block that it's time to start fruiting. But, you know, a lot of people don't want to mess with that. They just want to let the mushrooms grow free off the sides and, you know, let it do whatever it wants, not be constrained by the bag. So that is what this video is about. Um, you can you can do this a few different ways. I'm choosing to use this 19-quart tub. Um, it's going to fit in here pretty well. The mushrooms will have... Uh, a few inches of headspace to grow. I wish I had a little bit more clearance up top, but in terms of the sides, it's going to have plenty of room to grow out. Um, so a lot of people will even just, depending on where you live, if you're in a more humid area, um, many people will just take this out, plop it right in here, um, take these holes, cover them with micropore tape, uh, we're covering a lot, uh, or, or little things that I could go down a lot of rabbit holes about. I'm trying to keep it brief. Um, this is a modified tub. I've got these holes. I just drilled these. Uh, you don't necessarily need these depending on where you are, but uh, first part is going to be, for me at least, in this instance, covering these holes. And I'm not going to be too neat with the tape, even though I wish I had, you know, nice little squares, but, uh, let's just get this done for the sake of getting it done. So I, I had some problems with fruit flies or fungus gnats rather this summer. And man, I swear there's like one or two that just like likes to hide in the walls or something. Uh, so I've been using a lot of gasketed tubs, making sure <laughs> making sure I'm covering any sort of entryways with micropore tape, cannot be too cautious. If you've ever gotten fungus gnats, you know it's a, it can be a struggle. Not very uh, uncommon either. It's kind of a rite of passage at this point, I feel like. But hey, if you've been growing for a long time and uh, you have not dealt with fungus gnats, that's awesome. So, this is the first step, and then we're going to be introducing water in here, but not too much. A lot of people use perlite, but thanks to Dr. Ed Grand, who has uh, stated his dislike for perlite, which I am definitely with him on, um, he has started using puppy pads or incontinence pads 
in order to keep a, a reservoir of water down there, which is a genius idea. They're very, very cheap and they're not nearly as messy as perlite. Perlite, you'll just have that stuff floating around your house forever. These ones are a bit bigger, but it looks like the tape should cover it completely. That's good. Yeah, seriously, I do not want any any gnats in here. I God, don't get me started. I'm I'm not gonna rant about the gnats. I could. I could. Guys, <laughs> no matter how long you grow, you're gonna run into problems. <laughs> Let me just tell you that right now. But uh it's just part of the game. Luckily, I haven't had any issues with trike in quite a while. Trichoderma, trick. Okay, so I'm happy with these holes being covered. Now I'm going to place this incontinence pad in here. This is just something I bought for real cheap at Walmart, and I'm not even gonna need a full incontinence pad. You can see that it's like two or three times as big tub so I only need like this much so with that said I'm just gonna kind of do a rough approximate estimate here about how much is gonna need to go in there I don't care if it's not a perfect fit I mean this video is already almost seven minutes long so but hey um this is really, really useful information for a lot of people, I think. This is a question that seems to come up a lot is, can I do anything else if I don't want a fruit in the bag? And uh, yes, yes you can. You do something just like this. You don't have to do exactly this, but this is a good way to go in my book. I wonder what this stuff is made out of, like cotton? What is this highly absorbent material? Alright, got that part done. Set this aside. It's still a bit long, but uh... I was gonna say I don't care, but I do. I'm gonna cut this part off. It's kind of hard to cut this. You need to make sure you're catching it with the edge of the scissors or else you can kind of see it like gums up on itself. But not too hard. I will take this over perlite any day. Cause like after the perlite, it's like, what do I even do with this? Cause I, I want to reuse it, but at the same time I don't, cause who knows what's been living down there, growing around in, in between the little perlite pebbles. This I can just take out and throw away. All right, there we go. And then right here, I've got this lid. Stuff like this comes in handy a lot. This, this is just a little meal prep container lid. I bought like 50 of these meal prep containers. I use them for spawn sometimes. Sometimes I fruit out of them. So PP5, that's what you want. Excuse the long fingernails. I got to trim those, but uh, I, I get nervous about my hands in these videos. I mean, rightly so, because you don't want like grimy fingernails. <laughs> you need to be like a hand model, uh, at least kind of feel that way. But yeah, set that down in there. Take some water. You don't need a whole lot. You just want enough to absorb into the pad. Just kind of get everything in there. Really just, I mean, use your best judgment. I don't think there's a an exact science to getting an incontinence pad soaked completely correctly. I mean, there is actually an exact science, but 
We're not going to worry about that. Okay, we got that to kind of just keep it floating. And uh, I guess I should have been wearing gloves this whole time. It's not a huge deal. I washed my hands right before this, and, and this block is already fully colonized, so I'm not very concerned about contamination, but gloves are always good. We're going to free this bad boy from its bag. These bags are reusable, by the way. Um, honestly, I'm not going to reuse this. I have plenty. Um, <laughs> but if you want to be eco-friendly, just go ahead and cut the top off and you can, you can finagle that out of there. And then if you have a sealer, you can reseal the top. Um, keep it on the landfill for a little bit longer, but just so I can get this out because I'm not reusing this, I'm going to do the easy thing and just break open the seam, and rip this guy out. Oh yeah. Ooh. It smells exactly how it should. Earthy, foresty. It looks really wet, but like not in an alarming way, but in a noticeable way. Let's see, I just separated that. Left some of the gusset behind, but that's fine. And this is really wet. I almost am scared that it's like bacterial, but because it's it's got this sheen on it, but it's not slimy at all. It's just it's just the water. Slime is a is a good sign that you have bacterial contamination. And uh, like I said, I'm not not having the slime factor here. It's just noticeably wet, which is good. It means we're gonna have a good couple flushes here. So, there you go, guys. Um, this is basically it. That That is the solution to not fruiting in a bag. You just throw it in a tub. <laughs> uh, this is a very, very long-winded visual way of, of saying that. So, I'm going to uh, step away for just two seconds and go grab the lid. We've got our nice gusseted lid. This is gonna keep any uh, unwanted pests, i.e. fungus gnats out of here, if you're concerned about that at all, which <laughs> I am. Uh, and that's why I made sure to put the holes on this tub. Um, I probably wouldn't have because we're so dry here in Colorado, but ooh don't want to tip it uh yeah i mean this is this is gonna be it right here guys i'm not sure how long this is gonna take but uh, i'm gonna make sure it's getting some fresh air every now and then and if it's not showing any water droplets on the sides i'm gonna go ahead and just spray the sides with the spray bottle but i mean i already know like it's, it's going to be 99% humidity in there. Uh, using this for a few, this setup for a few different things. It works well. I think this is a, also a very good uh, size in between a shoebox tub and a, uh, what do you want to call it? A, a mono tub, you know, one of these big 55 or 64 quart, whatever court, courtages they are. But yeah, well now you guys know, you've seen me go through the whole process, aside from drill the holes, I will say get a special drill bit for that. They're like these uh, conical looking drill bits with step shelves on them, I forget what they're called. But they're specially designed for cutting circles and things like plastic, otherwise you are going to crack the plastic. I actually did crack it, like right here I think, but 
it was very small crack, so I'm not worried about it. But anyways, guys, I've been talking for 15 minutes. Here's a good place to end it. If you've made it this far, uh, you've obviously gotten something out of the video. So please, please, please like it and subscribe because I'm trying to grow this channel. I'm trying to grow my grain spawn business. Um, and oh, check out the shop too. That being said, Colorado Mycology Company dot com. Link below. Okay, everybody take care. I hope you get some awesome mushrooms. Uh, keep exploring the hobby. There, there is never an end point. We are, are all always learning. I will uh, see you guys later. Adios.